We matters. listened to two of them on the way up here. I listened yeah. to my I'm girl, sure. Jessica Lucero. To, to who? Jessica Lucero. She had one? Yeah. Oh, she cool. She had one on Brute. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, very cool. And then we listened to, what was that? Oh, name? I don't remember. It was, uh, it was a barbell strike one. What was the guy's name? Like Thomas something. Thomas oh, Rex. Oh, oh, the one that just came out. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah, that's why I figured they're all. Yeah, it's they've all gone their separate ways. Yeah, Mike Bledsoe and those guys are doing barbell business, and then uh, barbell shrug got taken over by uh, Michael Goldrick and a couple other guys, Alex Macklin and stuff. Okay. They were doing that before a little bit, but now they're like form. It's still just as good. Really? Yeah, it's awesome. It's good. I like it. Is that gonna be? No, it's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. We need that. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll get started. Six. So, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Wes. I am the head programmer um, and coach of Coast Range CrossFit, and I'm here with Bob Fistro. He is the Coast Range's mental guru, mental training coach, and then also Brittany Malone is our uh, certified nutrition, sports nutrition, yes, correct, correct. Uh, coach as well. So, uh, we're here to do a few podcasts for you guys, um, get out some content, some things for you guys to think about, and then also hopefully start some conversations, especially on the Facebook page. Um, so the first thing we're going to dive in today is, is the mental training side of this stuff. So yeah. uh, Bob, <laughs> Bob is our mental coach, you guys. He's, uh, I hooked up with, before I, I have Bob introduce himself, um, I hooked up with Bob a couple of years ago um, to be my mental coach going into the CrossFit regionals. Right after I, I did the CrossFit Games, I had some really hard issues with uh, mental stuff. I, I never felt like I kind of belonged in the sport or with the best of the sport. Um, I wasn't very confident in myself. I never felt like I was strong enough. I said everything that everybody kind of deals with, I think, coming up in the sport, um, and Bob helped me out a ton. So uh, with that being said, Bob, uh, give us a little background as far as like uh, what made you get into mental training and how did you even come up with any of this stuff? So let's go back to kind of my history. I, was, I grew up in a small town in northern Alberta, Canada. I played college baseball here in the United States. After my college career, I got into coaching. I was fortunate enough to coach with uh, the Canadian national team. And at that level, because it's an Olympic sport, they had sports psychologists. And you had to be a level three certified coach to coach at the international level. Kind of like CrossFit where they have level one, two, and three. And this is for mental training? This is for just to coach, be a baseball coach for Team Canada. Oh, wow. Okay. So at that point... Uh, Again, because it's an Olympic sport, they had a part in their level three kind of certification that talked about mental training. And that's where I first kind of dabbled into it. Uh, After coaching at Team Canada, I then started coaching college baseball in the United States. And that's when I really got into it. I started reading a couple books. Uh, Harvey Dorfman is one guy. He wrote a couple books about the mental training, mental side of baseball. Ken Revisa is another guy that uh, he worked for Cal State Fullerton. Uh, he had some, uh, at that point it was on cassette tapes. I don't know if everybody remembers what those are, but I wore out this cassette tape that he had, uh, this, you know, it was about mental training and, and how to get the most, uh, out of your performance. And then another coach I had kind of turned me on to Bob Rotella. Bob Rotella mm-hmm. is actually the golf PGA guru. Yeah. And if you want mental training, there it is. Man. Yeah. Like, the golfers, they need it more than anybody. For sure. For golf is the most mentally draining sport. Yeah. Ever. If you've ever done, learn how to golf properly, uh, read Bob Rotella's book, Golf is Not a Game of Perfect. Amazing, amazing resource. But it, it kind of goes through step by step how to play each hole. After three holes, I was mentally done. I was like, I can't, do this. I can't, I can't maintain this level of concentration, uh, you know, playing golf. So uh-huh. um, anyway, I got into that side of it, really had a lot of success coaching college pitchers with the mental side, visualization, and everything else. And then got out of coaching because I had kids, and being an assistant baseball coach doesn't pay the bills. Nope. (laughs) So uh, I got into CrossFit, and then uh, I worked out at CrossFit Inferno. Uh That's where we met. Yeah, that's where we met. And worked with you, Bill Grundler, uh, and ATP Mechanics was kind of their home base testing uh, for their products. And kind of between ATP Mechanics and talking to you guys – we started forming a bond, kind of like, hey, maybe this mental training thing will work for CrossFit athletes. And I still remember the day where, you know, I kind of talked to Bill Grunler and yourself and, and a couple other guys. We never really got into it. And then one day I saw Bill compete at the, the regionals. I think it was like three years ago, the last time they had the SoCal NorCal. Okay. 
And I saw Bill on, on the video feed, and he just didn't look the same. Right. So I kind of took a chance. I sent him a text, and I was like, hey, you know, how did you feel? Like, I watched you on the video, and he didn't look like the Bill that I knew from the gym. And he's like, hey, it's funny you say that. I felt like I had cement shoes. Uh, I felt really slow. Like, I didn't really want to be there. And I was like... This was 2014. Yes. This is when he messed up his knee. Yes. Okay. So he came out the next day and, and I watched it live and he looked amazing. Like oh, he looked like a different Bill. And we oh. texted back and forth that night and he's like, all right, I got it. And he came out and he looked like he was on a mission, blows out his knee. Yep. So finished yeah. the workout with a torn ACL. Torn ACL. So he again, still looked like a man on a mission during that thing too. Exactly. Yeah. So that's at that point he came back and said, Hey, I didn't realize it until you said it. And that's when we kind of started this whole mental training thing that, boom, maybe there's a correlation between what I know from what I've taken from my baseball side mm -hmm. and it can, we can apply it to CrossFit athletes. And that's kind of when we started this whole journey. That's awesome. And now you said that you were a pitcher in college as well, right? Yes. How did you notice being a pitcher in college translated to being a coach and understanding that like, hey, you know, I, I was a pitcher. I was there before this is how I'm going to tell you to do these things. Please listen to me type of deal. Like, did you notice that like there were a lot of things that you wish you would have learned when you were a pitcher in college to what you know then when you were coaching these guys? Yeah, for sure. When, um, when I played, nobody visualized mm -hmm. really. I mean, it was kind of a thing, but nobody did it consistently. Yeah. Uh, you just, when I played, I, I, my coaches always said I had a bulldog mentality, you know, I'm five foot eight, 170 pounds. You're not a pitcher's friend. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I threw like 80 miles an hour. So they always said, hey, you had a bulldog mentality. Yeah. Or the hockey player's mentality is the one that U.S. coaches usually say just because I'm from Canada. But, <laughs> so I, I took pride in that. that yeah. You know, I, I kind of went after people and I always was, but I always, I did self-talk. I was always tell myself, you got this. Let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, get angry at myself on the mound or, um, you know, and then I learned that was detrimental. But at yeah. the time, I didn't know. Um, so I took that as a player, applied that as a coach, like, Hey, I've been there. I understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. This is how you get through it. Then when we get to the CrossFit side, I'm like, okay, I've done CrossFit. Yep. I know this sucks. Yep. I know when the mind is telling you, Hey, stop. How do we get through it? Yep. So all those experiences kind of played into it. And that's kind of why I'm not a big fan of the, of the self-help book because a lot of people read all these books and they look for the aha moment. Yeah. But I, my personal feeling, and, it, and we'll come back to it when we talk about the, the correlation between this and, and the original team programming, mm -hmm. I think there's got to be some give and take. Like you, you have to talk about your experiences. Yeah. Uh, that's why the Facebook page is really important. Yeah. Uh, you know from the ATP Mechanics oh, Facebook yeah. page that we had with the regional athletes, when you guys shared your, it's like, hey, that guy's going through the same thing I am. Maybe I'm okay. Yep. But when you, like, I'm not going to post this because maybe people think I'm weird. Yeah, for or sure. Or they're not going through it. So, you know, like Dustin Virgil, mm -hmm. you guys kind of joke back and forth. But it's like, hey, yeah, I'm going through the same thing, Wes. It's like, okay, I'm cool. And it's, when it's coming from one of your peers. That's like the biggest thing that I got out of it when we were doing that. Is that I would post what I was feeling afterwards and stuff. And, and like you said, it was very, I was scared to post a lot of the stuff that I was feeling. You know what I mean? Because it was, it's. It's not something that I want to tell people that I'm I'm not uh, secure in the way I feel. I don't feel like I'm strong. I don't feel yeah. like I belong. Like that's not putting out this like feeling of confidence with anybody, right? And so for me to come out and say that, but then to hear that come back from other people that they, hey, I felt actually the same way, etc. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So th I'm not the only one, you know. And that yeah. makes me wonder about everybody else that I'm competing against too, or they're probably going through the exact same thing as me. Immediately, I felt way better, way more confident, and and was ready to go into competition right away. So you're right, 100%. Like having that feedback on the Facebook page and, and going back and forth on stuff is probably the best thing for sure. Um, so where, like you said, you kind of talked a little bit about how you, you started doing CrossFit yourself. Yeah. And that's what made you understand that like, whoa, this mental thing is really going to help in CrossFit, right? Like mm -hmm. I, we talked about how in golf it would be a big deal. I would argue that it's even more important in CrossFit. Yes. Right? Because almost every single time you do a workout, the, your limiting factor is your mental capabilities. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Right? Your mind's going to tell you, Stop. I don't want to go anymore. Right? Way before your body does. Way before. Exactly. I think the Navy SEALs call it the 40% rule, mm -hmm. where once your mind tells you stop, you have only use 40% of your capacity. Wow. Mentally and physically. Yeah. It's, That's crazy. I didn't know that. 
That's crazy to think about. That's very scary to think about. <laughs> it is crazy. I mean, <laughs> you know? But you're also talking about the top elite fighting force that yeah. the U.S. puts out you know, in the world. So 40% for them, might be 60%, 70% for us. But yeah, still, for sure. you've got more in the tank. But if you're thinking about a top-tier crossfitter, it could be considered the same thing, really, right? We're talking like yeah. top-tier military. And what we're dealing with is people at the CRCT program that are wanting to go to regionals, go to the games. And so they're striving to be the top tier of what CrossFit really is, right? Yeah. So I guess that could help technically apply to them. Question. So then do Navy SEALs go through some sort of mental training then? How do they dial in to get into that past 40 range then? Uh, they go through – well, BUDS is the, how they separate people out. They go through the, the – I think BUDS is like the initial – that where they, uh, I guess they weed out yep. people that can't camera run off. <laughs> yeah, okay. two weeks of of, tr- of training, right? It's, it's 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 hell week. Hell week is the biggest thing that gets people to stay or not. And so they already have these people who are, you would say, mentally tough enough to even weed that through. But then they go on top of that stuff. So my buddy um, Andy Crocker was a Navy SEAL for eight years. And uh, excuse me, sorry about that. And. He, if you look at him, he's not a very opposing individual. Like, you would look at him like, oh, yeah, this guy's definitely Navy SEAL. If anything, you're like, who is this goober? You know what <laughs> I mean? Um, and they're all like that. None of them are the most, like, uh, the biggest, like, you know, specimens of the world. Or they don't, they're not, like, the fittest people there. In fact, like, usually the guys who come in to – this is what he was telling me when he was going through it – is that the people who come in are, like, triathletes or marathon runners or oh, this, this stud or that stud or this uh, college wrestler or that college wrestler. Are usually the first ones that end up getting out of there. Um, it's the guys who are mentally tough yeah. that actually survive it out. So they already have that, I feel like, kind of ingrained in them going through buds and stuff. And then when they finally get through buds – Dave Castro actually talked about it um, if on the CrossFit site the other day. They had a video of behind the scenes of the Open with Dave Castro mm-hmm. where they followed him around. And he was constantly by himself in the area. He was going to be announcing the workout, going over what he was going to say, talking about it, doing hand gestures, etc., mm-hmm. doing his like watch throw, whatever he was going to do. <laughs> he was throw. doing that. He would do it multiple times. He would get on a treadmill and run and then do it again when he was running. He would be talking. And he even talked about that on that video saying, he goes, he goes, yeah, you know, I, I only get one chance to do this on camera, mm-hmm. but I have a million chances to do it in my mind. Yeah. And he's like, so technically I have a million chances to do this. Yeah. And there's no reason for me not to be prepared. And he was like, you know, a lot of people think that this is just saying a workout and stuff like that. He's like, but it's not to me. This is really important. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, and so I'm going to take every opportunity I can. And he related that to when he was a Navy SEAL. And he would tell his trainees when he was at, but he was actually my buddy Andy's buds instructor with oh, Dave really? Castro oh, and nice. Andy Stumpf. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he was saying, he goes, he, we would tell these guys all the time, yeah, you only have one chance when you go through that door. And he's like, but you have a million chances before you can get to that door to practice it in your mind and to go over it. And so it just feels like second nature when they do that. And they've done tests on Navy SEALs where they've had them. I think it's in the uh, Chris Kyle book, uh, American Sniper, okay. where he talks about they put a heart rate monitor on him. And before he would even go into a building, his heart rate would be almost at max heart rate, like just jack through the roof. The second the charge would go off and the door would blow open, his heart rate would just drop. And it would be at like a resting heart rate the whole time he was going through room to room because it was just mental training at that point. He's been through that scenario a million times and all it is is just muscle memory. Even though he had never even been in that room before and only seen it on like a, a platform that they made in front of him. Yeah. You know, that's so that's amazing. that's mental that's training awesome. right there, yeah. exactly. And in the the most recent post uh, that we did on the Mind Gym mm-hmm. was the visualization with the bobsledders. And oh yeah, them, yep. Do this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and, and you as a gymnast, I'm sure you guys. Have oh been, yeah, you know, I I remember that's like ingrained in my body, like all the movements that I would do before a skill. Like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump up this way, and then I'm gonna turn this way, like. Definitely practicing all that kind of stuff through gymnastics. So between Navy SEALs practicing an infiltration Mm -hmm. versus a CrossFit athlete or a gymnast or a bobsledder, you can get a thousand reps in your mind. Yep. And so that one time when you go, you're ready to go and it doesn't wear down your body. I can snatch in my mind. Yeah, a million times. A million times. Yeah. You know, and I'm always successful. I always PR in my mind. (laughs) That's the thing, you know? So when I get underneath, it's just reaction and it happens. It's funny you say that you're always successful. I remember when we first started doing this mental training stuff, I wasn't always successful in my mind. Yeah. Almost more than 50% of the time, I would say, when I was doing these things with you and visualization Mm -hmm. and practicing snatches and practicing going through workout, like most of the time I was failing. And it was funny, like I would think about it in my mind, okay, walk up to it. And I would even before I would start, I would go, okay, you're going to make this lift. You got this. Like, here we go. In my head thinking about it. And then I would miss the lift. 
Yeah. Like I was like setting myself up for disaster almost every single time. That never happens anymore. And now almost to a fault, I'm very like, I don't want to say cocky, but I'm like, I got this. You know what I mean? When I probably shouldn't even be trying it, you know? Um, and it works though. Every, like every time I've used it, like yesterday I did a workout at the gym um, and it was snatches and rope climbs. And it was a heavy snatch. It was like somewhere around like 80% of my max snatch. Yeah. And there was never a moment in my mind where I wasn't like, okay, you got this. And it helped me so much just to walk up to the bar, grab it and pull. Mm-hmm. knowing I had it without having set up think okay you're gonna be okay like this is gonna be fine and there was a guy I was working out with who was doing the exact same workout as me and I could see him going through that in his head every time he would walk up to the bar he, he was gonna get it yeah. he snatched out a million times he's almost never missed it right and but you could see him going up in his head like oh my heart is full of jacks like oh my god like what if I miss you know and like sitting there staring at the bar when with me I would just walk up and bam snatch it yeah. And I was good to go. If I miss, oh well. At least I had another chance to go again before he had probably even attempted one rep, right? Sure. So talking about, you know, you were talking about, Brittany, how you guys would use, you know, visualization in your um, gymnastics career. And you talked about how you guys would use visualization in baseball. We talk a lot about thinking about the things we're going to do. What are the different types of visualization and, and things that you can do, Bob, to prepare yourself for a CrossFit competition or even training, let's say? So we have like first person, third person visualization, what are some other things that we can do? So the visualization, first person is obviously kind of through your own eyes, mm-hmm. um, like you're like, seeing out of your own eyeballs. Most people don't visualize in that, especially in this type of, of a sport. Uh, the third person is going to be more of a TV, and I think more people are more comfortable visualizing that because of the Instagram society that we're in, because mm-hmm. we see all these lifts, which are great, yeah. Uh, coaching college pitchers in the 90s I used to have a VHS tape and I'd have to hit pause and you'd have to have that grainy screen <laughs> you, hit, yeah. you, hit, you know slow frame forward to try and get so but nowadays you know like hook grip they have these super slow motion yeah. windows and you can just see every movement so that's amazing and I think that's led more people to be more comfortable in that third person visualization uh, two things you can do is you can visualize individual lifts uh, that can be done prior to as you walk up to the bar you can do it at home. Uh, I know I visualize driving in the car in the traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can visualize whole workouts. That's a little harder. It takes a little more advanced skill. It takes some concentration and focus training as well. But there, you know, you've heard about swimmers that have uh, raced races in their minds and they've had world records. And the next day they go out and they set that record. Ariaga, you yeah. talked about literally. Uh, visualizing the entire game pitch by pitch from start to finish mm-hmm. and, and throwing a no-hitter and then going out and doing it. Yeah. Not just visualizing a certain pitch or anything like that, but literally sitting there for nine innings in his head, going over every single pitch, every single uh, batter he was going to go against. He's throwing two no-hitters in the last season. Yeah. The last two seasons. So. Yeah. So uh, that kind of stuff, I mean, that's higher level. Yeah. That's, but it's I, attainable. Yeah. A lot of people, and we talked about it before, like it's not sexy. Turn out mental training is sexy. It's not a PR. Like I would say, it's not a PR. Uh, you can't post it on Instagram. You can't get likes for it. But it's it's huge down the road. And and you and I have talked about it after the games or after regionals, and when people are eliminated or they're going to the next level. The first thing they always kind of mention is like, oh, I, my mental training, yeah. my mental training, my yeah. mental training. And that's kind of where this thing kind of escalated. Was I'm hearing I'm hearing all these people talk about the mental training, and they don't understand it. And because CrossFit's such a young sport, there's not many people out there that that know how to translate it. And I don't know if I do either, but I'm taking my experience and an experience working with you guys, yep. and it seems like we're working in the right direction. Mm-hmm. It's nothing new. Mental training is basically broken up into visualization, like we've talked about, uh, concentration and focus, and then goal setting. It's really those three things. That's mm-hmm. sports psychology in a nutshell. When you go to a sports psychology class, that's what you take, those three things. Uh, the first two are easily worked on. Goal setting, that's a little harder because people don't know how to set goals, and we're going to talk about that in the, in the regional group as well on, on how to set the goals. But as far as visualization goes, um, you know, the, there's, there's the pre-lift visualization like we talked about, or there's the, uh, the, whole, the whole workout thing. Like if you can visualize, uh, I think the first one we did with the group is Fran. Yeah. That's when I hooked you guys. Yep. Because oh. I was like, visualize Fran. And it was good because it was, a, it was a high level athlete group. These are all regional competitors. So I'm like, okay, start a clock, close your eyes, visualize Fran. And I'm like, if you have to, you can feelize it. Yeah, I was sitting in my chair like, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Moving my hands up and down. Yeah, butterfly seriously. Pull and I was. I was sitting in my chair motion. going like this, like through the motion of the butterfly pull up. And I can't even tell you how many times my mind drifted when I was doing that the first couple times. Yeah. How hard it was to bring myself. That back. was your first time doing the mental training? Oh, yeah. Training? Visualization. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we've done it since then, a couple of other workouts too, as well. Yep. Um, and then redone the workouts. And always, every single time, it's been a PR. Yeah. Every time. So we were, we did the Fran and people were like, oh, I'm having trouble with that. I said, okay, feel as it. And that's the thing with the bobsled driver. Yes. And then you guys were you gymnastics or the snowboarders where they do mm-hmm. the flips and mm-hmm. stuff. You're always seeing them do this thing, yep. Yep. all that. Um, so then all of a sudden people are posting. It's like, I got one second. So I had them uh, start the clock, do their thing, do their Fran time, hit stop. <laughs> and then they're like, I got one second off my PR. I was within two seconds of my PR. So here they are in their mind going through the Fran and they're right within the same time that they normally get it. No weight, no button, nothing else. And I'm like, okay, well, how did you feel physiologically? And they're like, you know what? I kind of started sweating. Mm. Always palms yeah. are sweating. Palms are yeah. sweating. Um, I kind of, I was, I, I felt like my heart rate was going up. I wasn't breathing, you know, those kind of things. So it's like, not only do you get, you know, a, like a mental response, but you get a physiological response to it. So you can learn physiologically how to control your breath, yeah. doing mental training, visualization. Mm. You know, not only just how to ingrain the movement in your system, but you also kind of know, I know when to rest, mm-hmm. those types of things. So, yeah, Fran, mental Fran was, that was the one I hooked you guys. Yep, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, Brittany, you talked about how you guys use this in gymnastics. What kind of stuff did, did you have like a mental coach for you guys? Or was it just your, your regular coach was kind of telling you, hey, you need to think about this stuff? Or No, we didn't. Um, back in club gymnastics, so... I started gymnastics when I was four, I started competing when I was like eight. So between the ages of eight and 18, like never at all. I think um, kind of the same thing where um, self-talk, I wouldn't say all all the time was a good self-talk, but definitely (laughs) practicing some sort of self-talk. And I think that just comes naturally like for any athlete um, or anyone just in general, but and then um, we would do a little bit of the feelization stuff. Um, and I think I only picked up on that because I saw the older girls doing it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to do that because they're <laughs> doing that. Um, and I think that's how I picked up on that. But visualization didn't come to me until college gymnastics. And um, it was very big for practicing beam. Um, and in college gymnastics, it was really big for our coaches to make sure that we we're not breaking our bodies down because at this point, like we're considered old for gymnasts, right? Like yeah. as a gymnast, your prime is when you're like 13 to like 17. Mm-hmm. And then once you turn 18, you're old. So as a college gymnast, it's really important that we don't get too many reps in too many routines in. So we would do a lot of visualization, um, for beam, which was really great for me because in club gymnastics, I was terrified of beam, like so scared that I would never practice any of my skills during practice. I would only throw them at competitions, oh, and which was really, boring. yeah, wow. <laughs> which was really dangerous. But in my mind, I knew like, like I was terrified at practice, and I would just work it on the floor, and then I'd get to a competition, and I just knew in my head like, I have to do it. There's nothing else. Like, I just have to go because if I want to compete this event, got to do it. And I would just throw it, and actually, I ended up staying on the beam most of the time. Um, surprisingly, but, um, in gymnastics, we definitely had to do, um, certain amount of routines through visualization. So we would have to sit there and my coach would make us do it in first person and we'd have to do that three times. And then we would have to do it, um, in uh, third person, first person back and forth. So we're practicing it all different ways. We also had to do routines where we had to say our cues out loud. So during a beam routine, you get this mental, uh, like a cue routine down. So like I would start off the beginning and I would think like, okay, breathe, you got this, Brittany. And then I'd get up on the beam. So then I'd start going and I'd think like on my back handspring, I'd be like, push back, push tall, see the beam. Okay. So like coach's cues that you would be doing. Yeah, exactly. So we would have a routine of that during our beam routine Mm -hmm. so that when we were competing, there was no other thoughts that came through our mind mm-hmm. because we just had this robot key routine down. Yep. So like when you're up there competing, there isn't any time to think about, or like it's so robotic. That you don't, this, exactly. Yeah. It's just like, you know, your cues and that's what you do. And that's what you practice in practice. So we had to do routines where we did that. That looked different for everyone. For me, it was like verbal cues. I had a teammate who actually competed, um, 
for at regionals for Fort Vancouver and hers were noises. Like she instead of like saying like breathe, she'd be like boom, ba ba ba. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I that's can. and that's cool. what she used. So everyone was definitely different. Um and it was definitely cool to hear what other people use, but we did a lot of that. Very cool. So yeah. the biggest like common theme I'm theme that I've seen here is that we all kind of grew up doing these sports, whether it be gymnastics or, or even CrossFit or baseball or anything like that. And the second we all of a sudden decide that, okay, hey, we're done playing around with this stuff and it's time to take it to the next level. So we're saying like, we want to become the 1% or whatever it is. You go to college and you want to compete in gymnastics at the college level, high level. You play college baseball and then you coach at the highest level as possible in college during baseball. Um, we take our CrossFit to regionals levels or the games levels. That's the 1% of everything. And what seems to always happen with that 1% is all of a sudden mental training comes in, Mm -hmm. right? Because we've already been doing these movements over and over and over again. We've already been through these workouts. We've already done this stuff for years at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And that is really the next step is that you have to get your mental training in. And if you're not, you're never going to be where you possibly could. Yeah. Right. I always tell people that the, in terms of baseball, because I was a scout uh, with the Dodgers for 10 years, and I always tell people that the, the people that you see playing baseball on TV are not the best baseball players in the world. And the reason I say that is because they have to go through the minor leagues, and the minor leagues is a grind, yeah. kind of like training for CrossFit. Mm-hmm. And there's there's probably a lot of great baseball players out there that couldn't, couldn't get through it. They couldn't play in small towns riding on small buses. Uh, you know, right, and then staying in hotels for four days, and then getting on another bus ride. For t- you know, they did, they just couldn't put up with that grind. Yeah, it's and the same sure thing probably CrossFit. Right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's probably a ton of people out there could be really good at CrossFit, but the working out three or four times a day, missing mm-hmm. weddings, missing birthdays, not hanging out with friends on the weekends, like yeah. having your body hurt all the time, like those types of things. Like, no, I mean, it really isn't like if you look at the down and dirty of it, like no, it's not fun. No. Right, but that's how it is at any level. When you get to that top level, like yeah. yeah, it can be fun if you're doing well, and if you're enjoying it, and you get to that point. But you have to go through that minor league level first, yeah. where it's like, man, this is a grind. You got to get through this, and that's where that mental training really comes into play. Like you're saying, the best major league baseball players are the most mentally tough ones, right? They are yeah. by far. I mean, if you go, you know, if you don't get a hit for a week in the minor leagues, you're over thirty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, some guys, you know, the wife's calling because the bills are due. And they don't make very much money. So the bills are due. The wife's calling. It's like CrossFit. You don't make a lot of money. You don't make any money. But you got to do it. <laughs> exactly. There's three people in this sport that make money. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you got to train two, three times a day. you got to have a job. I mean, that's the same thing with, with baseball. You know, they, they, they've they got to get their treatment in. They've got to work out. They've got to play the game. Then they got to get on a bus. Mm-hmm. So I, that's kind of where the whole correlation between baseball and and the grind of CrossFit and professional CrossFit, I guess we're going to call it. Yeah, it is professional and, sport and, now, yeah, for sure. And, and, Even if you're not getting paid for it, it is a professional sport. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's where I personally connected with, with you guys is I understood the grind of it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a daily fight. It's a daily grind. It's not, we can't look three or four weeks down the road. We can't look, you know, it's, it's a daily thing. We've mm-hmm. got to meet each day with their successes and their negatives. But you know what? And we talk about it, short-term memory. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah, short-term yep. memory is the biggest thing you can have as an athlete. You just mm-hmm. have to, tomorrow is done, today is the day, and then yesterday, or I mean, uh, tomorrow is, what did I say? Yesterday is done, <laughs> today is now, and tomorrow is whatever it's going to be, but you got to worry about today. Yep, yeah, what you you're can't, doing at that moment. Yeah, you can't, if you missed, one, if you missed the, your snatch workout yesterday, it's over. Tomorrow, today's workout is what it is, and then, you know, there's going to be snatches down the road. You're going to have a great day on them, but, you know, it is what it is, so... Yep. Awesome. So, um, kind of in closing, Bob, what do we have to look forward to with the, the CRCT programming that's going on with the mental training stuff? And I would say part two of that question would be, what are some things that you want to see from the athletes themselves when you are posting this, this stuff online too as well? Sure. We're going to basically go over the three areas of the mental training. There's going to be some goal setting. There's going to be the visualization. Um, and you know, it's, it's tough. Oh, let me go through it. There's going to be goal setting, visualization, and then focus drills. We've touched on all three of those already. Uh, the focus drills I had to do uh, where you're supposed to kind of hold a mental image. Nobody really posted anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> then there was the visualization where I posted the video about uh, the bobsled thing, trying to get an idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll do a mental friend. That might hook some people. I don't know. Yep. And then there's the goal setting, which is that's going to be the next post next Thursday. So, you know, I need I need feedback. And we talked about earlier in, in kind of this podcast is is that's where you get the most out of this. You know, I we all have friends that every 
every day they're going to like three or four landscape images on Facebook that have some inspirational message. And, <laughs> and you're, you're just like, stop, stop already. You know, eventually something's got to click in. So what I need people to do is like, hey, I tried visualizing and I can't get it. Then I can work with you. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Or it's like, holy cow, I did it and I hit that snatch. You're not bragging. What well, you're yeah. doing is you're allowing the next person to go, okay, I'm what not did, weird Or they because I they had could, the same thing happen to me. Yeah, or they yeah. can even say like, oh, hey, you hit it. What did you do yeah. like, differently during your mental training? Because exactly. like, it's not working for me, right? Yeah. That was the biggest thing that we had with the ATP um, online or the Facebook page when we were doing this was that everybody posted on there. Yeah. Everybody did. And it was so awesome to see that like, okay, so-and-so's going through this too. And so-and-so's going. And I remember there was always this kind of like wait for somebody to post type thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not going to be the first one to post. I'm going to wait for somebody else to. And then as people started posting and doing that, it became less of like, okay, I'm not worried about it. We all know what we're going through here. Let's just keep going. And so, um, I know that I've been trying to do that post, like my, my past experiences with the stuff that we've done and plus like what's happening with me now when we're doing this and so i'll continue to do that but guys honestly if you want to get the most out of this like you do them number one yeah. and like bob said it's not sexy it's not fun to sit there and close your eyes and, and visualize a, a flame you know what i mean and when it goes away <laughs> try to visualize it again it's like yeah that stuff's not fun but if it, if you really honestly truly truly want to make regionals, truly, truly want to make the games. Yeah. And I think that's a question you have to ask yourself too. Like really sit down in a corner by yourself for a few hours mm -hmm. and go through like what is really important in your life and, and, and why is this so important to you? And if it still is after that, then you have to do this. Like it's yeah. not a, it's, it's not an optional, you know, thing. Like we would put up, Hey, optional, you should get on the assault bike for 20 minutes afterwards or something like that. Like, no, this is in my opinion, more important than adding volume to your training. Yeah. More important than make, getting in a pool and doing this. I think this would be next to nutrition and sleep and hydration. It would be mental training, and then it would be working out. Yeah, and we we uh, you know I've talked about before. There's you know a top level CrossFitter. We won't name names. Yeah, um, they're having a tough time with the mental side. Yep. And you and I've talked about this person and and reached out to them and reached out to them. They're not <laughs> completely interested. But that's fine. But you know, and and in the last regional, you can tell that they're not 100% into it. And imagine if they were. Yeah, imagine if they were. And I think they're kind of uh, in that point where they're unsure on how to get through it because they're not sure, like you guys were, with the mental training, like how to do it. Am I doing it right? It's kind of weird. Is it hokey? Mm -hmm. All those kind of things. It, it's really not. All the top level athletes do it on some level. So uh, it, reach out to me privately through the Facebook group as well if you're not. If you're not in our Facebook group, then, you know, you got to get on the – on the regional team, but, yeah. uh, you know, or whatever, uh, just get some kind of resources for mental, mental training. Um, yeah, I, it, it is what it is. You gotta, you gotta do it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take that long though, either. And it doesn't. Not, and you're not beat up. It doesn't. It doesn't. But it's, it's like with anything else that we do in our lives is that we usually take the stuff that's most important and put it on the back burner first. And then we let all of our to-do lists take, you know, take precedence over everything else. That's really, truly important to us, you know? Yeah. And so that's why I said, take a few hours, sit down in a corner by yourself, ask yourself, is this really what you want? Is this really important to you? And if it is, then, okay, let's start doing it. But the cool thing is that we have this Facebook community and we have this community of Coast Range CrossFit that um, we get to do it together with and you're not on your own like maybe that one yeah. athlete is. Maybe he doesn't have that community to work out with and to, to talk about this stuff with as well. So yeah. I think that's a big thing that everybody on this team has going for them. And so take advantage of it for sure. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Cool. Heck yeah, you guys. Um, if you have any questions about uh, this mental training stuff, please post below um, to the comments and let's get this thread going. And again, uh, next Thursday when that next mental training comes out from Bob, <laughs> let's get some comments on there and let's you know start start the conversation and, and making ourselves better athletes. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yep.